Welcome to the first of um, either three or four videos um, covering this chapter on logic. I've not decided if there'll be three or four yet. Um, in any case, we're covering in this video this first section on propositional logic. Um, and here is the section in the book which I encourage you to read, but I'm actually going to be using um, the notes to talk about this um, because I'm going to do it in a slightly different order than what's given in the book. So first of all, um, you need to know what a proposition is. And a proposition is just a statement that's either true or false. Okay? Now notice that excludes things like um, uh, things like um, pick up the trash. That's an order, but it's not it's, it's not true or false. So that, that can't be a proposition. It excludes things like the dog, sentence fragments like that. Um, proposition has to be a complete sentence. And and that's true or false, and the dog is not true or false. It also excludes questions, um, what time is it, and it excludes things like opinions, um, like uh, Radiohead's the best band ever. I may think so, but you don't necessarily think that. Um, so here are some more examples. GGC is located in Gwinnett County. That's a proposition, and it's a true proposition. 5 plus 2 is 8. That is a proposition, and it's false. Uh, two is a prime number. That's a proposition, and it's true. Here we have things that are not propositions. How are you is not a proposition because it's a question. It's not true or false. X plus 5 equals 3. That is not a proposition because X is an undefined variable in this case. Now, if we said that for X equal to 2, X plus 5 equals 3, that would be a proposition. It would be a false one. If we said for X equals negative 2, x plus 5 equals 3, that would be a true proposition. But if I don't define what x is, then x plus 5 equals 3 is not a proposition. Now, once we have propositions, we can build more complicated ones um, using what are called logical operators. The first of which is called the negation operator. So we start out with a single proposition, and then the statement, it is not the case that p. That is another proposition, which is the negation of p. Uh, we, we write it with this little hook, uh, P, and it's read as not P. So, for example, if I start out with GGC is located in Gwinnett County, the negation of that would be GGC is not located in Gwinnett County. Um, and if I start with 5 plus 2 is 8, the negation is 5 plus 2 is not 8. If I start with 2 is a prime number, the negation is 2 is not a prime number. Um, and then as you're going through these notes, you can watch this embedded video for more examples. The second... Um, type I want to talk about is what's called um, the conjunction. So I start out with two propositions, P and Q, and and then the proposition, quote unquote, P and Q, denoted P with an upside down V, Q. This is the conjunction, and it is only going to be true when P and Q are true and false otherwise. And I'll talk more about what I'm what what that means um, in the next video when we do truth tables. Our next type of logical operator is called the disjunction. So start out with two propositions, P and Q, and we form P or Q, denoted P or Q, and the notation we use is, is just a V. And the disjunction is false when both P and Q are false and true otherwise. Now, this is what's known as the inclusive or. Um, that is, we include the possibility that both of them are true for this statement to be true. In everyday English, we usually don't use we don't do that, but in math and in, and in logic and in programming, um, or is is inclusive. If you want to talk about the exclusive or, we have a special notation for that. Um, we use circle plus, or sometimes write x or for exclusive or. The exclusive or is true when exactly one of p and q is true and false otherwise. Next operator is called the implication. So it's written in English in words, P implies Q, and denoted in symbols with this arrow. Sometimes you have just one line pointing, um, but P implies Q is the implication. And P implies Q is only false when P is true and Q is false. And again, I'll talk about that more when we do um, truth tables. Now, there's different ways that we write P implies Q in English. We could write... Um, just P implies Q, or we tend to say a lot, if P, then Q, or P only if Q. P is sufficient for Q, Q whenever P. 
Uh, the last one we're going to talk about is what's called the biconditional statement. And it, this is when we have an arrow pointing in both directions, P, if, and only if, Q. And it is true when P and Q have the same truth values and false otherwise. Now, one of the things you're going to need to be able to do is what we're calling translation. That is, taking something written in words and turning, in, turning them into symbols and vice versa. So in this example, we have the statement in English, if you are older than 13 or you are with your parents, then you can attend a PG-13 movie. So the first thing we do is we take all the individual propositions inside of it and write them as symbols. So we'll let A be, you're older than 13, let B be, you're with your parents, and C be, you can attend a PG-13 movie. So taking this sentence and writing it in symbols would be, you are older than 13 or you're with your parents, well that's this part, A or B. And if all of this, then you can attend a PG-13 movie, well the if then makes it an implication. So I have the arrow pointing towards C, which is uh, what comes after then. So that's how you write that in symbols. Um, again, there are a couple of videos. Uh, watch both of these videos. Uh, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and work some of the practice problems that are from the notes. So this is the first practice problem, and I'm not going to do all of them. I'm going to do the first one, A, and I'm also going to do G and H. So I'm going to take all of these things written in symbols and write them into English. So first I have not P. So I'm literally just taking P, which is I bought a lottery ticket, and I'm trying translating that into not P. So it would just be, I did not buy a lottery ticket this week. And that's all there is to it. Um, G would be not P and not Q. So in English, that would be I did not buy a lottery ticket whoops, this week. and, because the upside down V is and, a conjunction, and I did not win the million dollar jackpot. And then finally, H. H would just be, um, so I have, actually because I, I want to do an example of an implication, um, instead of doing H, I think I'm going to do, uh, I think I'm going to do F. I'm going to do an example of an implication. So this would be not P implies not Q. So this would be if I did not buy a lottery ticket this week, then I did not win the million dollar jackpot. Okay? And that's all, that's all there is to do in these types of problems. Okay, let's look at another one. Um, here, we are going to um, start out with three propositions. Um, P is going to be, you get an A on the final, Q is you do every exercise in the course, and R is you get an A in this class. And I want to turn them um, into symbols. I want to write the propositions using P, Q, and R in logical connectives. Okay, so looking at the first one, you get an A in this class. Well, that is the proposition R. You do not do every exercise in this course. Well, saying you do every exercise that would be Q, and putting the not in there negates it. So we're combining these two propositions together with that word but. Now in English, when we use that word, we're trying to con usually con trying to contrast two different statements, but really what we're saying is, you get an A and you didn't do every exercise. So we're combining the words together as a conjunction. So this would be R and not Q. 
Okay. Um, let's see. I think I also want to do um, part B. I'll do A, B, and F. Okay. So B is you get an A on the final. You do every exercise, and you get an A in this class. Well, think about what we're saying when we write these, these uh, things separated by commas. We're saying all of these things happen. So what we're really saying is you get an A on the final, which is P, and you do every exercise, which is Q, and you get an A in the class, which is R. And so that's how you would write that one. And then now for, for the last one, for F, you will get an A in this class if and only if you do either, if you either do every exercise or you get an A in the final. So this if and only if tells us that we're going to use the biconditional connective. So you will get an A in this class, that is R, if and only if we're combining something together with an either or, that is an exclusive or, the, the, the disjunct, the uh, exclusive or, yeah, the circle plus. So if and only if you either do every exercise, so that's Q, or you get an A on the final, that's P. And so that's how we would write that one. All right, so that's all that I wanted to cover um, in this video. The next one is just going to be um, all about truth tables. So we're going to look at all of our um, logical operators we used, uh, negation, conjunction, disjunction, exclusive or, implication, and biconditional, and look at um, truth tables. That is, when do we know when a, a compound proposition, when we put things together with these operators, when do we know this is true, when do we know this is false? So that'll be in the very next video.